Hello guys, how's everyone doing today? If you remember in our last tutorial we added an image button so that whenever uh, the player presses the button this door would open automatically. To use the image button we added a um, surface GUI to the started GUI and then we put the image button inside the uh, surface GUI and whenever the, the button is clicked on we fire a remote event from the uh, client side to the server side. And when the server side catches the signal, it's gonna open the door, right? And, and that all seems like a lot of work to do to open this door. So in this tutorial, we're gonna try and do it a little differently. Instead of uh, having an image button on the client side, we're gonna build our own image button, our own button that, that's going to look exactly like the image button that we had in the prior tutorial. But it's going to be a button that is on the server side. So we do not need to use a remote event to open the door. Just to refresh your memory, here I have a door and I have a wall. In between the door and the wall, we have a hinge constraint. And our hinge constraint is a servo. It has angular responsiveness of 200, angle speed of 1, Servo max torque is 1 million and target angle is 0. And now let's go and build our button. So we're gonna go to the part, we're gonna add a cylinder. I'm gonna bring the cylinder down here. I'm gonna scale it. So I'm gonna make it very thin and I'm gonna rotate it. Alright, next thing we wanna do is we wanna go to the toolbox we're gonna add the same image button that we had um, that that we used in the prior tutorial. So just make sure your part is selected here. That's the button. Actually, you know what? Let, let me rename this so we know this is the button. All right. So there it is. That's the button. Make sure it's selected. We're gonna click on the image that we want to put on our button. So I'm just gonna click on this, and there it is. The image has been added to the button. Now you can see that the image has been added to the side over here, right? The orange thing, that's the image. So I need to rotate it to, to the front here. I'm not sure what side that is, so I'm just gonna try them all. Actually, th this one where it is right now, that's is facing front. So I'm gonna try, um, it's not gonna be the back, maybe the left side. Oh, there it is. I'm very lucky today. Oh, actually, you know, you can figure that out because it was facing to the left here and that's the front, right? So to the left of the front, well, well this size to the left of the front, so uh, it has to be the, the left of the part. So anyway, um, next thing we're going to do is we want to put this part on our wall. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make sure this button is anchored. Okay, so now it's anchored, and now I'm gonna place it on the wall. We're gonna place it at the same location as we had it before, and it's kind of small, so I want to scale it and make it a little bit bigger. There. All right, that, that looks uh, almost exactly the same spot as we had in our prior tutorial. But again, this button is a physical button that exists in the workspace. So now we do not need to use a remote event to have the button open the door. Let's now go to our button. We're gonna click on the plus sign. We're gonna add a click detector and we're gonna select the click detector. We're gonna click on the plus sign and add a script. In your script, just enter the following lines. On the first line here, I'm declaring my click detector. So my script is here, script.parent is the click detector. So click here is referencing to the click detector. Um, the second line here, I'm referencing to my hinge constraint, which is on the wall. So let's look for the wall, here's the wall, and there's the hinge constraint. So this hinge here is referencing to this hinge constraint. Now down here we have a mouse click event of the click detector. So when when the player clicks on the button, it's going to connect to this function. And all we do is we open the door 120 degrees, wait for 7 seconds, and close the door back to the original position. Let's play and take a look. So 
So there is my door and my button. I'm going to click on it and the door opens. I think, uh, I think I'm glitching. It feels like I'm flying there. All right. And after seven seconds, it closes. Now, remember, in our prior tutorial, the button must be on this face of this wall because we that's where we place the uh, surface GUI. But in this case, we, we don't have to put it there. We can put it anywhere. We can move it to this side or you can replicate the button. You can have like two buttons, right? Even if you want to, you, you can just duplicate this and then move, uh, put one on each side, what, whatever. And it's going to work. Let's take a look. So I'm, I don't know what's wrong with Roblox today. Look at that. I, I'm glitching. I'm, I'm gliding. Anyway, so I'm going to click on the button on this side and you see the door opens so if you like you can put one on each side of the wall and then click on this side and it opens and also the beauty of this button is you don't need to fire a remote event and you don't have to catch the remote event to open the door Everyone, now you have two different ways to use a button to open the door and whichever way you prefer to use is really up to you. Thank you all for watching and we will see you again soon. Take care.